We made extraordinary gains on this historic trip to advance the security and prosperity of the United States, our friends, and our allies. President Trump, at the end of his first foreign trip, giving himself good reviews, which is what presidents always do. And we're back now with the panel. Jillian, how do you think the president did on, on this trip? And why do you think he seemed to get along so much better with the leaders in the Middle East than he did with our allies in Europe? So I really divide the trip into two parts. Um, conceptually, it's helpful. So the first is really going around and touching on the major world's, the world's major three religions, excuse me, Chris, Christianity, Judaism, and Islam. And I think that that part of the trip went relatively well. We had some pushback from the media about certain protocol optics, like, you know, like what was donning the heads of Melania and Ivanka Trump. That's fine. Um, I think the second part of the trip was really NATO focused and there the president's speech actually got a lot of criticism but I think for the first time the administration cabinet wide is actually striking the right tone on NATO by which I mean they're focusing on recommitting themselves to the importance of the alliance and they've backtracked or progressed however you want to phrase it on the the idea that it has become obsolete which is a good thing for everyone at the same time they're encouraging the member nations to contribute 2% GDP, which at this time, remember, this was part of the president's campaign platform. So I think he's got an, a mandate from the American people to push for that, and it's something he's doing. I think it's a nice balance. We should point out that the first part of the trip, especially the Saudi part of the trip, was largely organized by Jared Kushner, and people who support him say he was talking to all of those Saudi leaders and helping. and, and it, Sunni Muslim leaders during the transition, and that's one of the reasons it was such a success. Chuck, what struck you about these nine days? I have to say the uh, chilly atmospherics of the Europe portion of the trip, in contrast to the warmth, the abundant good feeling that was on display in Saudi Arabia between the president and the uh, royal family of Saudi Arabia, that, that contrast, I think, spoke volumes. It's true that he's, the president got a lot of criticism for not uttering the words, I personally support Article 5, the mutual defense guarantee in NATO. Attack on one is an attack on all. Correct. Um, but the reason for another president with another history who had run a different campaign, that wouldn't be an issue. <clears throat> Excuse me, the Europeans feel very embattled and nervous with respect to the Trump administration. He supported Brexit. He openly spoke warmly about Marine Le Pen. He's called NATO obsolete. And they were looking for some, the kind of reassurance that he gave the Saudis, and they didn't get it. And I think that will have repercussions going forward. Let's talk about the domestic side, because the president returns to a Congress that is badly divided about repeal and replace, and that has already, both Republicans and Democrats, rejected his budget that we were just talking about with the two senators. Michael, some Senate Republicans are talking about just giving up on health care and moving straight to tax reform. It would be a mistake. I mean, the American health care system is collapsing under Obamacare. But part of the reason that this agenda is so complicated and that we need a real sense of urgency out of both the White House and the Congress about health care, tax reform, the budget, the debt limit, all this stuff that's coming up and how it fits together is that for seven years the Republican Party has told itself a lie that we are all united on wanting the same ends, that we all want to repeal Obamacare, it's just about what the replace is. And what you actually have is you have very legitimate and heartfelt disagreements within the party about what the best path forward is. Uh, some conservatives who want to focus on Title I regulations, Bill Cassidy, who has his plan, uh, the Tuesday group in the House, which uh, is much the more, more of a force, group. the moderate group, kind of a force for the status quo. I think the healthiest thing that's happened in the last couple of months is that in the House, for the first time, leadership and the members themselves acknowledge that there are real differences of policy in this party. This isn't good guys and bad guys. It isn't disagreements about tactics. They sat down for a couple of weeks. They understood where they were coming from, and they came up with a coalition form of government that said, you know what, let's let the states decide. If they want to wave out of Obamacare, that's fine for some of them, and others don't. But, that's but, the model that's ne that needs to happen going forward but, but to bring the problem, together. of course, with that, as you just heard from Bill Cassidy, is he's saying they're basically going to put that over the side. Maybe they'll take a little bit out of it, but they're going to write their own bill. Jerry, 
Is it possible that we could get to the end of 2017, this year, and that the Republican-controlled Congress, Republican control of the House and the Senate, will not have passed a single major Trump legislative initiative? And if so, what does that mean for prospects for Republicans in the 2018 midterm? Well, it, first of all, it is possible because we're staring it down the, 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 the path here of no easy wins, you know, no big easy wins. By the way, there's one other that you shouldn't forget, which is by the fall, this Congress has to raise the debt ceiling, which everybody hates to do. You also got to fund the government. Have to fund the government, have to raise the debt ceiling. They're going to have to get Republican votes. Conservatives hate raising the debt ceiling. Everybody hates raising the debt ceiling. That has to happen as well. So you have a whole series of tough or unpleasant choices before the Congress. My guess is that in the end, I think a Republican Congress will figure out a way to get together and get some of these things done, even in truncated form, because it's too heavy a lift to go through an entire year in full control of the government and not have anything to show for it. Do you think they're past tax uh, health care reform, or do you think they're going to end up eventually realizing? You had Mitch McConnell say, I don't see how we get to 50, yeah. which is not the kind of thing he openly says. Do you think that they could just punt on that and go to tax reform? I think they could easily walk past health and go to tax reform. I, uh, Mitch McConnell's a smart guy. He's not going to move down a path unless he knows there's success at the end of that path. And if he doesn't, you know, that's because there is no way to get 50 votes plus one. Um, I do think tax reform is something that Republicans really want to do. They've come to Washington to cut taxes. They're not going to walk out of this town, I think, in December without having given that at least a really good try. Michael? Yeah, no, I think, you know, they need to do both, and all these things are intertwined. At some point, they have to sit down, they have to look at these various points, the debt limit, the spending, tax reform, health care, and define which wings of the party, which different factions within the parties will get what wins where. And once they do that, uh, they'll get some. The other thing that has to be considered this week is, is the Paris Accords, the Paris Climate uh, Treaty. And, and what makes that so complicated, I think, for the president is it's non-binding. I think he's actually going to come out this week and pull out of the Paris Accords. He made an explicit promise on the campaign trail. He's somebody who likes to keep his promises. And second, the United States shouldn't stay in a treaty just because it's non-binding. If we don't intend on participating, we should pull out. I think the president will do that. All right. We have to leave here. Thank you, panel. See you next Sunday.